Our main task in lecture 2 is to talk about solving equations. Let's start by defining what equations are. Equations tell us the relationship between one or more variables and other values, constants. They're expressed as equalities, and to solve an equation means to find the values of the variables that make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. For example, let's look at the equation to a circle x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. For some a value of x, well, it'll have to be less than or equal to r, well the absolute value of x will be less than or equal to r. Uh, we'll have an x there, we'll have corresponding values of y, y1 and y2. So we've got points on the circle that are solutions to the equation to the circle. We should note the difference between equations and functions. A function changes x into y. It's a one-way relationship between those two variables. So we can have y as a function of x. We'll look at functions in more detail in lecture 3. Now let's look at the parts of an equation. First, there are variables. A variable is something whose magnitude changes. For example, we might have price and revenue. X and Y were variables in the equation to the circle. As X changes, Y changes. We can have exogenous and endogenous variables. Exogenous variables, or independent variables, are variables that are determined outside the equation. And endogenous variables, dependent variables, are determined within the model. For example, we might have interest rates as an exogenous variable and investment as an endogenous variable. Interest rates are determined by government policy from outside and investment then depends on interest rates. As well as variables, we have constants. These are values that don't change. Where a constant is associated with a variable, for example, we, here we have q equals 100 minus 2p. 100, of course, is a constant. But this constant here we call a coefficient. Sometimes these uh, coefficients are expressed as symbols. It might be A or B or alpha and beta. That implies that these values can change between models, but they say the same within the, a particular model. These are parameters. Having defined equations more precisely, let's now look at how we solve them. First, a bit of theory. Well, as I said earlier, we solve equations by finding the values that the variables can take so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. We solve equations using deductive logic. We perform various operations on the equation until we arrive at a solution. What are these operations? Well, there are two types. The first type is a group of three operations that will give rise to an equivalent equation. Remember the equivalence arrow from lecture one. The first of these three operations is if we add the same number to both sides of an equation, so that doesn't change the solution. If we multiply both sides of the equation by a number, well a number different from zero, then we give us rise to an equivalent equation. And thirdly, if we replace uh, one side of the equation by an equal expression, again we end up with an equivalent equation. So here, on the left hand side we go from x times x plus 2 to x squared plus 2x. They're equal expressions, so these two equations are logically equivalent and will have the same solution. The important point here is if we carry out any of these three operations or combinations of these operations, we'll end up with equivalent equations that have the same solution to the original equation. There are other operations that we carry out quite often that don't produce equivalent operations. In these cases, the first equation implies the second equation. So if we multiply or divide both sides of an equation by an expression involving a variable, or if we raise both sides of an equation to an equal power, then in these cases the first equation implies the second equation. So we use an implications arrow. It may not be the case that the second equation has the same solutions as the first equation. We need to test those. When we're deriving the solution to an equation, we can replace an equivalence arrow with an implications arrow, but not vice versa. 
Equations are mathematical statements about the relationship between variables. When we solve equations, we perform the operations discussed above and link one equation to the next with an implications error. For example, we have 2x minus 8 is equal to 10. This implies that 2x is equal to 18. So we add 8 to both sides. And the next step, we divide both sides by 2. So 2x equals 18 implies x equals 9. And we have a solution. We could have used equivalence arrows here because we've just used those first three operations that give rise to equivalent equations. But usually when we're solving equations, we use the implications arrow. At some times in examples, I will use equivalence arrows just to demonstrate the difference between the two types of rules. So we can see that not all implications are reversible. x equals minus 5 implies that the absolute value of x equals 5, but the absolute value of x equaling 5 does not imply that x equals minus 5. It could equal plus 5. Another example is uh, the case where we have two numbers multiplying to 0. That'll be the case if and only if at least 1 is equal to 0. So x times y equals 0 is equivalent to saying x equals 0 or y equals 0. In the next modules, we'll look at how we actually solve some equations.